Okay, welcome. Welcome to my podcast. Welcome to a special edition of Inside with Brett Hawk. Uh, I'm here with Yoav Bruck, who is a three-time Israeli Olympian. But that's just what your resume says, Yoav. Um, I want to give you a little bit of a deeper introduction because I'm, I want to give people some context. Um, I want to give people some understanding. I want to thank the people that are here to listen. And um, if anyone doesn't want to be here, then please don't be here. Um, I can already see in the comment section there are certain people that maybe should not be here. So please leave if you don't want to be here. But listen, I wanted to say, Yoav, uh, you are beyond just a, a swimmer or a person that I've met in my life. You are a brother to me. You are a, a family member. You are somebody that I hold in the highest regard and highest respect in my life. When you come to me and say, Brett, can we talk? I s immediately want to drop everything and I want to help you any way that I can. Um, you have had such an impact on me and my life that um, I'm I'm willing to do anything to help you and your family and your cause, Yoav, because you are um, a special man to me. Uh, for those that don't know, we both swam at Auburn University in the 90s, but you were the man that first introduced me to Auburn University. You were actually the first recruit of David Marsh uh, back in the early 90s. So you were there before me. And David credits you to helping build the program single handedly. Yoav was the man that built that program with David Marsh as a swimmer, as a swimmer of his. Um, you're the one that introduced me to the program. But not only that, you were the one that saw potential in me for the first time. The first person who ever saw potential in me was Yoav Brock. And you brought me to Auburn University and you changed my life and I am indebted to you forever. So that's a little bit of background on me and Yoav and who you are to me, Yoav. But um, I just want to say I'm especially thankful for you being here today. I'm glad you're safe and well. Um, but I, I do want to start with the question that is very, very broad. How are you doing? Thank you, uh, Brett, for the introduction. If it was a normal day, I would have said stop, stop, more, more. But uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, my sense of humor is not very developed today. But but thank you for the introduction, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. And um, to answer your question, I, I don't really have an answer. It's you Normally, people are asked, how are you? And like, fine, bad, whatever. I, I just don't have an answer. It, it, the whole situation is so bad. We have lost so many people. We have to take responsibility and be honest and say that we've been humiliated by this brutal attack. So there's responsibility on our side, our government side, but but that's beyond the point. We put this all behind us and we're fighting for our country, for our lives. We're, we're a country that cannot lose a war and we will not lose a war. If we lose a war, we will cease to exist. We're the only country in the world that a leader of another country, Iran, for the instance, uh, for, for, for this instance, will stand at the main stage of the UN and call for our destruction. So we wake up every day knowing that people want to destroy us, but this time it's for real. And we woke up to a brutal attack that has just left all, all of us uh, speechless. So again, I'm thanking you for um, talking to me here. Um, speaking of David Marsh, it was his idea. He said, why don't you talk to Brett? And and, and here we are. And, and thank you, David, for that. Um, and, you know, Brett, with all our sporting achievements and Olympics and all that, um, I uh, I feel like this is the most important interview I've ever done in my life. I'm, I'm here serving my country, serving the cause. But you know more than my country. Um, we're all in it together. The Western world is in it together. And you've comment something about the comment section and if people don't want to be there. I My goal is that at the end of this um, chat, people will understand that there's no question here about the Palestinian cause, the Israeli cause. This is above and beyond. There's, there's points in life when you need to stop and you talk about humanity and what's right and what's wrong. And if anyone here listening to me thinks that when a terrorist murders, and I'm sorry for the graphics, but 
um, if a terrorist murder a pregnant woman and he cuts her stomach open to make sure he kills the unborn baby and then they burn them or they rape women and when they're being interrogated they admit to raping children then don't be here it's not about Palestine and Israel it's about humanity mm. and, the, and 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 radical beliefs with cruelty will lead all of us to a very very bad place so i'm here in paris thought that i'm here for work preparing for the olympics for my business but um i'm here and i'm listening to the parisians and and they're in shock as much as we are because they've been here to the bataclan attack there are millions of muslims living in this country majority of them living in peace and want peace but there are some extremists that worry a lot of people so brett i think the 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 bottom line of what happens here is it's like a principal discussion about what's right and what's wrong and if i have to explain to people that 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 such brutality and 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 you know the american officers that were in israel this week said that they know isis this is 10 times worse than isis how, how in someone's mind can one be 10 times worse than isis how much hatred can people have and where is this going to lead this world so i think we need to understand that and and we we need to understand that there's a conflict and, and conflicts are not new to this world but the level of brutality cannot be tolerated and and people need to stop and and understand what's right and what's wrong and and, and on this platform mm. which is a a swimming a sports platform i think it's 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 um it's the only right thing to do uh, to discuss what sport can do to to bring more uh, peace and 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 you know tranquility or or, mm. or at least some proportion to what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, well, I pr- appreciate you give, giving some insight and some context there. Again, um, there are people on both sides of this, and I don't know what you call by sides of this, but obviously there are Israelis and, and Palestinians, and they and they have very um, strong opinions on both sides. Um, and, and if you're not one of those, uh, people, then you're just an observer like me in the end. Right. Um, so l- let's leave this to the Israelis and Palestinians who are actually going through this and, and, um, listen to them in, in that sense. But, uh, but from, from my perspective, yo, of, uh, again, you're a you're a friend of mine, a a, a brother of mine. I'm, I'm going to go beyond friend. You're a brother of mine. You're somebody that I regard as I would do anything for at any time of my life, whenever called upon. That you needed me, you, and um, and that's the way I feel today. And and I I know that you've been affected by this directly as well. You've lost um, colleagues. You've lost workmates. Um, has this uh, affected your your direct family in any way, or is everybody okay and safe? Well, it is. It has affected every single Israeli citizen. I will go as far as saying that probably vast majority of Jews around the world will know someone that was murdered. Um, we have had a beloved employee who was brutally murdered. It took five days. To recognize his body so once again if this paints the picture of the brutality that was used there we have another employee who just was announced this morning that her niece was found and again the optics are um it's just i've watched one video a couple of days ago and i couldn't sleep ever since so to answer your question yes every single one of us have been affected um israelis live in post-trauma to begin with um, I don't know of a sovereign country that has thousands and thousands and thousands of missiles being shot at every single uh, conflict. So add, uh, add this to the conflict here. It's not only the people that were murdered, it's it's constant flow of missiles flying all over the place that keeps on affecting the day to day. And on the other hand, we're strong and we're getting ready to to fight those extreme terrorists. Um, it's very important, Brett, to to um, 
to mention the, the fact, and it is a fact, and we're fighting here, fake media all over the place. This is why it's so important for me to be here. I'm very sympathetic for innocent people, but the fact is that we are doing everything, and I mean everything. I lost my first cousin in the last war of Gaza because we do everything not to hurt civilians. Had we not done it, we, we would have had a lot less casualties. But my first cousin died because before we entered, we took measurements not to hit civili civilians, and, and then we got our people hurt. They're holding their ammunition in the hospital. They have their missiles in kindergartens. We're doing everything we can not to hurt civilians while they do everything they can to hurt civilians, ours and theirs. We're begging people to leave Gaza as we speak because we have to do what we have to do to clear this terrorist nest. And they're holding them as human shields. You have to understand that. So we've all been affected. We're dealing with savages that today it's us, but tomorrow, Brett, is the Western world. And, and when you listen to interviews of people who are choosing to be uh, truthful, they say, today it's us, tomorrow it's you. If you're not extreme Islamist, then this is your fate. This is not Islam. I had an Uber driver here who's Algerian driving me from the airport and, and, and he's asked me where I'm from and I'm very proud to say that I'm an Israeli and he started apologizing, saying this is not the right, this is not the way of Islam. This is not the way human beings treat each other and so on and so forth. So I think if, if, you, if, you, bear, if you stayed with us this long, I hope by now you understand this is so much bigger than the, the, the specific conflict we have over there. This is like bad against good. And this is um, um, Western and civilized society going against um, evil. And, and while we add it, Brett, I have to add, um, you know, I've seen a couple Arab swimmers who swim in American universities. I'm not going to give them the benefit of mentioning their name, but there's an Olympic champion from Indiana and there's an Egyptian swimmer from Notre Dame that are posting stuff that is pro-Hamas. And you have to remember, Hamas is a recognized terrorist organization by the government of the US, of all of the EU, I'm sure of your government, of previous government in Australia. And they're showing support to a terrorist organization while going to schools in America. America is Israel's biggest ally. They're making fun of America sending over um, an aircraft carrier saying a little slap by whatever, whatever comparing murdering 1,300 people to a little slap. Um, this needs to be stopped. And, and, and I'm encouraging the IOC to look into that. I'm encouraging the University of Indiana. The answer I got from them is completely unacceptable. Put the politically correct stuff aside from now, guys. And an and Egyptian from Notre Dame, give me a break. Egypt could have opened this border and helped the Palestinians if they wanted to. They're not doing a thing, so please don't preach to us. And and look, from, from my perspective again, Yoav, you've never been a person that has discriminated or hated anybody. You've never been that person. What, you, what you're stating right here from what I can understand is just a uh, fact and um and, and it's affecting Please, i'm you. encouraging anyone to check every single thing i'm saying yeah now i, I know that we did um man that listen the, the comment section please look there are there are platforms where you can do this and you can say what you you feel just if you don't want to be here please leave uh, it's really just um disturbing some of the comments uh, it's really upsetting me but um i will say this yo of we did come on here because we did want to talk about how this is going to affect uh athletes and um what's coming up you know in the next 10 months it should be a celebration of humanity where all countries come together and compete at the olympic games and i know israel particularly because you're israeli and we're talking about israel right now they've invested a lot of money into swimming and in, into sport and they want to be successful on the world stage let's just take the, the 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 discussion to the sports side for a second how is this going to affect israeli athletes and, and israeli swimmers in particular the ones that are preparing for paris um 
as much as I can share with you, I'm not a psychologist and I, I cannot um, tell you what the psychology behind um, being um, um, under siege, sitting in a shelter for so long and so on and so forth. So, so back home, the clubs are, are trying to create an environment where kids can go back to swim. Our best swimmers are training in um, some of the best universities in the US. And, and, and that's very lucky for us because they're in the US at the moment. Um, what I'm particularly worried about is qualification. And if you want to think about it, the, the world championships that matters will be in Qatar. Mm. Um, I've personally been in Qatar for a month during the World Cup of football, and I was operating a big operation there. I met a lot of Qataris. Uh, but uh, let's not forget the headquarters of the Hamas is sitting in Doha, Qatar. We're very uncomfortable right now thinking about sending our kids to a country that lets the headquarters of the Hamas sit in their territories. Um, not a single, single Arab leader had the um, decency to get in front of the media and, and um, you know, condemn violence on its worst shape without getting into the politics. So, so we're not getting a vibe that people will try to calm things down. The contrary is what we see. Um, I, I, I understand the nature of it. It's, um, um, the, there's not a single Arab democracy in, in their culture. I think even the leaders are afraid to say reasonable things so the extremists will not go after them. But if you let the extremists control your rhetoric and, and your actions, then this brings a bigger worry again for us as Israelis and for the Western world. Um, so it affects us in every way, shape, and form. Um, I, I don't know what the world championships will be like. I seriously think and, and encourage the governing bodies to, to look into that. And, and if sports is the only thing, then go ahead, do whatever. But if, if sports should be bridge for peace and understanding and, and, um, and discussion between nations, than a country that supports uh, terror and not denouncing an inch of it should uh, be reconsidered. And as for us, you know, we're a strong nation. We'll, we'll get through it. Our swimmers uh, will miss whatever they're missing now in training, but they'll make up for it and their spirits will be uh, high and they'll come to represent our country. Sometimes you know very well that training is not the only thing, the mentality behind it is important. And, and, and we'll swim for our flag more than ever. Mm, yeah. Um, man, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's so terrible. And, I, and I've been kind of in this seat in the past couple of years where I've had to talk about, you know, Ukraine and, and Russia, you know, I, I've, I've got, I got friends on both sides. I've got Russian friends, I've got Ukrainian friends and, and, um, and it, and it was such a awful position to kind of sit in and be an observer in that it was very uncomfortable. Now I feel I'm back in this position where I'm just helpless in a way i'm just a bystander i'm just somebody that turns on the news and you and your families and your friends are, are living through this um and again i'm talking about people on both sides of this but but <laughs> but the savagery that is going on it, it just has to stop it has to end i mean if if there's going to be a fair fight then make it a fair fight that that's fine if you guys want to you know get your militaries together and fight then that, then so be it. That that's the way war has been in the past, and that's the way war will be in the future, I guess. But this, um, you know, innocent people being caught up in this is is the problem that I have. And I'm talking about innocent people, any innocent people. It's just it should not be happening. And um, you know, right now I have friends on the Israeli side who uh, can't come home. Uh, what what's the situation with people that are either leaving? Israel or trying to get back into Israel? How's the borders of Israel right now? Well, well, a couple of things you've raised. So, so before I answer about the borders, um, I mean, I was in New York for work. I'm here in Paris preparing for the Olympics. I had a flight going back to Israel. It was canceled. Our airlines are flying, um, but foreign airlines for a reasonable, uh, um, you know, as a reasonable judgment, have stopped flying. I, I don't think that 4,000 missiles being um, shot at, at a country encourage a foreign air, um, air crew to, <laughs> to keep on fighting, flying to a destination. But 
our national airlines are are patriotic and they're flying so you could get in but i'd rather um i rather cancel my flight and let someone who's being drafted to the army go instead of me i i will do this important job here talking to you and letting the world um understand what happens y you've talked about innocent people and you know i'm trying to be objective here as much as i can and at the risk of people back home even being upset with me i will say again this has to be a conversation above the Israeli-Palestine conflict. There is a conflict. And in a conflict, people suffer. The fact that the Hamas holds all of their um, uh, civilians as refugees is, is, is a fact. And people can argue. And people that write talkbacks that don't know crap about what's happening in the Middle East can keep on writing talkbacks. But if they consider themselves as human beings, let, let's talk at the core of what we all believe in. So there's innocent people, but at one point, when such savagery is happening, one should ask himself, what's his responsibility? So for us, for our government and for us, for, for our army, how much longer can we keep on getting criticism from the world, from the West and not save our own people? Brett, you need to understand 1,300 deaths in Israel, and, and this is not the final number, unfortunately, is 10 times September 11th, 10 times. There's not a single person in Israel that is not in trauma, that doesn't know someone who's died. And yes, there's innocent people in Gaza. Well, let the UN wake up for once. And even the European Union has woken up and, and you're welcome to listen to the president of the EU saying, we're standing strong behind Israel because they finally understand. It's not us being the evil, we're trying to protect them. If, if extreme uh, Islam militia who are recognized by every single government in the Western world, except, okay, Iran, who's, who, who subsidized this, pays for it. Uh, if all of those are, are with us, they understand the danger. Now, let the Western world take care of those um, people suffering on, on their end. We're, we're happy to have someone take care of them. If Egypt wants to take part, they're bordering with Gaza the same way as we do. They just historically didn't care about the Palestinians. It's a good way to bash Israel because it's the only democracy in the Middle East. And mm. those are all facts. And, and um, uh, you know, I've, um, I've had um, friends who are uh, Muslim in the swimming community, in the business community, um, life community. Israel is a striving democracy. There's 2 million Muslims, Israeli Muslims living in our communities. I can share with you that the, the previous government um, has passed an unprecedented, um, it passed a resolution for an unprecedented amount of money going to the Arab population of Israel. My friend Simon, who was the head of the Swimming Federation and became a parliament member, has passed it to where we believe that we can build bridges through sport and we'll build more facilities for the Israeli Arabs so they can engage in sport, not in crime or hatred. And it started to work until, okay, our government changed. But we're trying to do things that build bridges. We're trying to do things that will create some sort of a future in our region. But we need the international community to jump in because, again, if it's not um, in Europe already, They'll get there if this doesn't get stopped. And trust me, all those evil forces are sitting there and they're watching what Europe is doing, what the US is doing, because if they wouldn't support us, then those people will understand that it's legitimate to move to their next step. And that's their next step, Europe and America and the free world. Yeah, that's that was kind of going to be my next question here is like, it it's, doesn't seem like it's de-escalating in any way. It seems like it's only escalating in, in a way um there, there are still hostages out there 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 are warnings of people to leave gaza so uh, what happens next to you what, 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 i mean you obviously can't predict the the future but uh what happens in the next month here that it, it doesn't seem like it's going backwards it seems like it's escalating um in the immediate um future israel will have no choice but to go to gaza it's our worst nightmare. It is a terrorist nest, but we have to do it. You, you can't sit aside and give your other chick when 1,300 people 
women, children, Holocaust survivors. I, I'm sure you've all seen the pictures. It's 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 unfathomable. So what we, we're going to have to go in and clean the Hamas leadership. Most Palestinians in Gaza hate the Hamas as much as we do, but it's a dictatorship system that wouldn't let them express anything. So in a way, we're going to save those people as well. Hopefully, we'll do it quickly and swiftly and with the least amount of casualties. And again, our primary cause has always been to have at least the least um, casualties on both sides. But when they use their own children as human shields, it, it, it's them to blame and not us. And then on the long term, we have the Hezbollah up in the north, financed by Iran, with tens of thousands of missiles. It's every Western um, country's interest that this will not explode as well. Um, this is why America is mobilizing forces over. Um, so, uh, I mean, we're all waiting anxiously to understand where this evolves, and it, it could it could evolve into a very big um, uh, conflict. Um, if you want to look third thirty thousand feet for the future, it's all about education. And sport is a big part of education. And when you look at the school books that the Palestinians are teaching their kids and many other countries, the anti-Semitism and the hatred and the pictures and the videos, they're marching three-year-olds in uniforms and, and, and weapons at, at, at the young age when they just learn how to speak, they already say, kill the Jews. So education will have to be a big part of a better future for us, for Europe, for the U.S., for the Western world, there's um, uh, there's plenty of of radical Jews and radical Christians and radical Islamists who are not going to do good for this world. We're looking at the at the at the you know the, the reasonable people that are true believers in each in their own religion, and and I think there's a lot of commonalities to all those religions. Let's remember we all started from the same place. Um, and, and it's our hope, my personal hope, that through education, if you want to stay optimistic, even during those dire days, um, through education, and sport is a big part of education, you teach people fair play, and you teach humanity, and you teach um, all those values that you and I have learned from, from swimming, but any kid should learn, as opposed to kill the Jews, murder the uh infidels whether the jews christian or non uh islam and even within the islam they're fighting with each other about who's right and, and they have uh, a history of uh like many other cultures of killing each other so it's it's education and the immediate um need is for us to just protect ourselves yeah listen yo I'm, I'm obviously Deeply concerned for for people, um, I guess, because this is a swimming platform and we do talk about swimming right now. I'm deeply concerned for athletes and for swimmers. Are you recommending or are you observing um, that Israeli athletes, their best chance to perform next year in Paris, would that be to leave the country right now or uh, uh, can they be in Israel? preparing for the Olympics and still be successful in eight months? Um, it's unknown because we don't know how the war will evolve and it could be a few days, it could be a few weeks or a few months. Um, once again, we're very lucky to have the same system that you and I have enjoyed with top Israeli swimmers who've climbed up in the world rankings and they're the swimming good uh, American universities. So most of our Olympic potential is going to be training out of Israel anyhow. Um, for the young generation, I, I hope swimming will be a big part of their rehabilitation. And, and with all the post-traumatic kids and with all um, the you know wounded and, and deaths and, and all that, uh, I hope swimming will be part of a solution of us rebuilding ourselves. And, and if I'm ver to be very optimistic, let's hope we take down Hamas and let's hope the Arab world uh, get get itself together, and when they help Gaza, they help uh, build a, a ruling party there that cares about the people, and they will build a few swimming pools where the kids will uh, be jumping in the pool instead of marching with weapons. Mm. Um, a bit mm. naive, but uh, let me dream that this might happen one day. We have to. We have to look towards the future, y'all. We have to dream. We have to look and, and see an end, uh, however distant that may be. 
we have to keep our eyes on that, right? We we all have goals, and that's what we learn through through swimming, through athletics. Is you have a vision for what you want for the future, and you aim towards that, and that's what we should be aiming towards. It's not we're not we're not aiming towards more death and destruction by any means. <laughs> we're looking for peace wherever that can be found. But um, um, and th- and listen, I want to reiterate here as well. Uh, First and foremost, Yoav is a brother to me. Yoav is somebody that I hold in the highest regard. So I'm always going to have a place for Yoav to come and talk on my platform. This is my platform, and that's my brother. And he's always welcome here at, at any point that he ever wants to come on here because this is what I've done. I've, I've built a platform for my friends, for my brothers, and and for people that I respect and hold in the highest regard. And uh, like I said, Yoav is a man that has changed my life. He's changed many other people's lives. And I know who Yoav is as a person. So for anyone that would be on here doubting that, I know for a fact you don't know this man. I know for a fact you've never met him. Uh, you've never had a conversation with him. And, uh, you know, you you don't really have any right to be saying anything uh, that, that I know is not true about Yoav Brock, who's... Uh, a dear friend of mine. So uh, again, I wanted to reiterate that. So you have, you know, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you felt necessary that you wanted to come on here and say, again, this is your platform uh, as much as anybody's. Again, Brad, thank you for, for the, the warm words. And, and you know very well that I love you the same way and, and um, much rather be here talking about how we've built Auburn together. But again, this is more important for, for all the haters. Um, and, and I get that. I get that. We live in a world that is very divided. Mm. In the U.S., the Democrats and the Republicans cannot agree about a thing. In my own country, and a big part of why this happened is that we were divided, but we're now united. Um, I, I encourage people to to be mature and, and learn the facts. There's a lot of disinformation on the social media. I'll give you an example, and it's a very painful one. The specific Egyptian swimmer from Notre Dame is posting, or 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 the, the the Tunisian Olympic champion, shame on him. He should spread love and 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 the the values of of sport, and he has a responsibility to spread that as opposed to, or at least condemn what happened. But they're posting pictures of kids that supposedly were murdered by Israel. So cynical because those pictures have in them Jewish kids that were just brutally murdered last week so check the facts please don't take anything from either side for granted find some reliable sources to learn the history and understand what happens there there is so much disinformation and the extreme left in america in america imagine after september 11 people are demonstrating for al-qaeda would anyone take that Harvard University has 31 different groups that are that are pro Hamas as Jews are being killed in Israel by Hamas brutally. So something has happened and all this woke and, and, and whatever needs to be rechecked. And, and for people, again, check the facts, take some time. Don't just run and talk back based on no information. Most people don't even know where Israel is on the map. And, and if you really care and if you really care about Palestinians and trust me, I care about Palestinians more than a lot of the people that talk back, write talkbacks here because mm. I live there. And if the Palestinians will have good life, I will have a good life. So we're all for building bridges, but there's a red line that has been crossed. I'm encouraging Olympic athletes, Muslim especially, to just condemn the horrific, brutal acts. It doesn't take away anything from you or from your cause or from your love to your uh, Arab brothers, it just shows that you're a human being. It just shows that you play by fair, um, um, you know, by rules and being fair. And if you are to go to the Olympics, then this is what you're expected to be playing by anyhow. Uh, I can I can add to you that we will fight um, to, to ban athletes that spread lies and deceits and support terrorist organizations. I can tell you that the Judo Federation International one has banned an athlete that was pro Hamas, and we will expect World Swimming to do the same if swimmers will do that and will not um, take off uh, publications that they did. Um, it, it's a war for us. It's life or death. 
its principles. It's the good versus the bad. So I think it is very important to say that. And, and I hope that people that listen to me understand that we're under all this pain and sorrow. We're still trying to see a future. We still try to build bridges. I just gave the examples of how 2 million Arab Israelis were on the way of getting better um, opportunities in sport. And, and I sure hope this will be the future of Arab Israelis in Israel. So, so there's, there's also good and there's also positivity, but we cannot overlook the, the evil that we've just seen um, last week. You know, I'm a product of Holocaust survivors. And for me to be a third generation after my grandparents had to escape Europe because they wanted to murder them for simply being Jewish, and, and this happens in my country again, if you don't understand what I'm fighting for, then, you know, we really have a big problem. Well, listen, um, I love you, buddy. And I'm so thankful that you came on here today and, and spoke. Um, we need more conversation. We need more conversation around love and um, peace, for sure. Uh, this is obviously going to be a continued, uh, very heated situation over the next few weeks, few months. And um, I just pray for your safety your family safety um and you're always welcome on here my friend you know that anytime you want to come and, and talk and open up the conversation we are here to talk obviously the people in some of the people in the comments section need to go and um check themselves check their facts or um just check their life because uh it's it's unnecessary some of the words that have been spoken but uh like i said we 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 deflect the negativity. We bring in some positivity somehow, and we look towards the future. We look towards the light, my friend. And um, like I said, I love you very much, and I, I wish the best for you, okay? Thank you, Brett. I appreciate it a lot, and, and I, I appreciate people listening to us. And, and uh, let's hope for better days, and, and I, I sure hope I'll be back here talking about swimming. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. As soon as we have some positivity coming out of the swimming world um, for Israel, for Palestine, for for anybody that wants to go out there and swim and and be successful, we're here to talk about it. So, uh, yeah, let's come back and talk about some real good swimming here in the future. I appreciate it, y'all. Thanks, man. Thank you, my friend. Thanks a lot. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Appreciate it.